So let's start. Okay. Um, yeah, we're going to talk um, about Bug. Give an introduction to it. It's a tool that we created um, together. Uh, Bug stands for. Or it's an acronym. It stands for Bosch, UAA, CredUp, and Concourse. Um, and we created a utility, which also called Bug with lowercase. So, uh, yeah. I'm Ruben, and this is Ramon, and we work for Stark and Wayne. Um, you know, from the awesome shirts that we don't have at the moment. <laughs> but, <yeah>. Ridiculous. <laughs> uh, for the people that don't know Stark and Wayne, we do consultancy uh, around Cloud Foundry and Bosch. Um, yeah, so Buck, um, it's open source. It's just you can get it from um, GitHub, but we. Um, this talk will be more about like uh, the things um, underneath Bug, or yeah, that that helped us build Bug. Uh, we have another session uh, later today where we go into uh, really show off uh, the Bug utility. Um, this is more about Bosch, UAA, CredUp, and Concourse, and the new things in that, and how they really fit together really well. Um, so why? Did we create Buck? Um, yeah, it was. We saw the new developments with CF deployment, um, the CF deployment re repo, and got really excited about wanting to use that in a production manner, like have uh, uh, using Bosch config server for credential management and all those things. But it still felt getting an environment for that up and running uh, was a bit troublesome. Um, I really liked um, Bosch Lite for development purposes, so I wanted to have some of the user experience of um, uh, Bosch Lite, and I brought that to uh, yeah the Bosch Create and for uh, yeah. Yes. So when you first go to the Bosch deployment repo, you think, "What the hell do I need to do here?" Yeah. Uh, so we figured out we need to build something around that a really small thing. Uh, so that we can just, we invoke the Bosch deployment, and you can just do bug up, and there should be something there. The same thing you do, you know, we, we did with Bosch Lite. Yeah. Um, I think we can go to the next slide. Yeah. So we have some few ingredients for it. So what were the things that allowed us to create bug? So the first, yeah, we have this, uh, there's this new um, paradigm of creating deployment repos, um, dash deployment repos. For example, you have the Cloud Foundry deploy CF deployment repo, you have the Bosch deployment repos, but there are more uh, deployment repos for yeah, more and more Bosch releases coming up. So you have like the Bosch release, but you also have the, the uh, deployment repo. And the deployment repo is uh, it's for uh, where uh, release maintainers can publish manifests, uh, and not like manifests that just work in one environment, but manifests that are built for shareability, right? So you have a base manifest, and that base manifest you can enable features or um, and um, yeah, enable some features for that manifest, and that's done with ops files. That's something. Uh, that we now have because of the new Bosch CLI that brought us ops files. So those are used in those deployment repos. Another thing is uh, the new Bosch CLI has support for variables. So things that aren't, there's no same default for something, for example, a domain for your Cloud Foundry deployment, that will be a variable. Other things like secrets and stuff, um, those will be generated by the a CLI and stored in a varse store. Uh, more on that later. Um, yeah, so they are really built for um, shareability, with shareability in mind. Um, the, the Bosch deployment uh, repo is now actually referenced a lot in the Bosch docs, so it's like the standard way to do things, the recommended way to do things. Um, there's even a style guide uh, in CF deployment about how to how those deployment repos should be laid out uh, and what are best practices around them. Um, and yeah, I don't know if this already happens, but like CF deployment will be replacing the CF release, right? So CF release, this big release where all sorts of Bosch releases are um, 
uh, mesh together into one big release. And with the deployment, uh, CF deployment, it's going to like one big manifest which references all those separate releases. So you have, and those sort of the, the compatibility matrix basically uh, is owned by CF deployment instead of CF release, or at least that's where it's moving. I don't know if it's already happened. That's the idea. <laughs> that's the idea. <laughs> it's basically the idea. <laughs> but yeah. Um, so yeah, and the nice thing about the new Bosch is that we have, is we have this whole notion of Bosch compiled releases. We used to have these, uh, the, the Bosch compiled package cache where you, we all re been redirected to one big package cache, which will basically see from, okay, which release do I have? Which stem cell do I, which stem cell do I need for it? So now we have the uh, Bosch compiled releases. And the nice thing about this is uh, what, we, what we also do, we will show you in a minute, is that we would bug, we say that we want to deploy it almost, try to uh, install Bosch almost offline, because most of the time we have crappy internet and we, yeah. we want to have the ability to just deploy Bosch. And um, so yeah. One of the main reasons for this, for or why this is relevant to Buck, is because one of the goals is we wanted to have a Bosch Lite experience. Like the, with Bosch Lite, for those if you don't know, that was like a, a vagrant-based machine where you could really easily have your Bosch running, and so for us, speed was important, right? Because in development scenarios, you will be often uh, tearing down your environment and building it back up. So. Compiled releases, basically, um, with compiled releases, you skip the, the whole compilation step during deployment. So that was, was one of the reasons why it was important for us to use compiled releases. Yeah, I think it, it takes about 20 minutes, takes off 20 minutes of our deployment. Uh. Yeah. So yeah, um, variables and secrets. Uh, I don't know if anyone here is no cred up. Um, so what we, uh, yeah. Here's a kind of seeding. Uh, <laughs> God damn it, it's really small. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, so yeah, what, what, what we invoke with Buck is that because first you need your, your credentials for deploying Bosch. And you need, you need to generate uh, something. Uh, and we don't want to do that. We want someone else need to handle that. And we do this with Bosch int. So Bosch int, then we have a variable name, food, type, password. And it will be stored in cred. So this is the same this is the same thing what we do with Buck because Buck up will just do a bush in it, and it will set a, a set of passwords that you need, uh, so like for the the, the directory uh, password, uh, the UI uh, UI uh, username and uh, passwords and that kind of stuff. Um, so as you can see, it's just been put in cred. So and if you do uh, if you use Buck up, there will be a cred. So created. And that's where all the variable, uh, variables will be. Secrets. Where all the secrets will be. Um, so this is the Bosch config. So, uh, this is how we, um, uh, when we wanted to use it with, um, with uh, uh, in the concourse pipeline. Uh, so no, this, this is, is, this is oh, no, this is not the concourse <laughs> pipeline. I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself. So this is for uh, a deployment uh, for. Is if you can see here, the Docker Swarm, and all the t the, so the Docker TLS CA, the Docker TLS certificate, uh, the private key, it's all generated by CredUp. Mm -hmm. Because so CredUp is the config server in Bosch. Yeah, so, okay. Um, so what, what's important to note here is the variables, right? So that's in the Bosch deployment manifest, you can specify variables. And that's basically where you say th those will be generated variables. And there are like two ways those variables can be uh, generated. Like if you have your full director up and running, then it will be done by config server, right? Config and config server, uh, there are multiple config server implementations. One of them is CredUp, uh, which is becoming the factor standard. Uh, but yeah, config servers are pluggable. But they should be able to take those things and generate the secret and store it as for the director to get it back later. But the problem is when you're creating your initial director, you don't have your cred up yet or your thing. So that's why the, the same functionality exists in the uh, CLI. That was like, the, 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 this is what, like the, the Bosch CLI has its own cred up implementation basically 
Uh, and this is just showing that you can generate passwords with the Bosch CLI. Um, but in the end, it's just uh, using those variables in the manifest, and they will be either stored in a, in a CRED file or they will be stored in CRED Um Yeah. Um, so oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. No, you go. <laughs> it's your turn. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, so the, the manifest we saw previously that was like the, the thing uh, for Docker. So we are actually deploying this Docker deployment here. You see that it finishes, and then we have we can use the Bosch CLI to list the variables that were generated. You see the paths here. Um, hey, wait. Hmm. <gasps> yeah, it works. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So um, this is the. Bosch director name, this is the uh, deployment name, and this is the variable name. So that's just how they will be, I don't know, uh, that's the, how the path is generated. And we can uh, then use the CredUp uh, CLI to actually uh, get one of those secrets back. So this is what happens when you're using CredUp uh, instead of the uh, Bosch Farstore uh, flag. Okay. And now it's got more exciting because really recently, we haven't even published this version of Buck yet, but uh, Concourse uh, has now support for, uh, they added credential manager support initially for Vault, uh, but they now also have support for CredUp, uh, which means that we can now connect the Concourse, uh, which we deploy with Buck, uh, to uh, Credit. Mm -hmm. No, this is not it. Okay. Um, yeah, connected as well. So uh, you see the, the variable syntax is really similar. So the use case we have is you set up your pipeline, and from that pipeline you want to start deploying stuff, right? Uh, but you need connect a connection to a director. Um, but yeah, how do you get those credentials? Uh, yeah, you use variables. Um, so you can do this, and when you run it, you get this. Uh, it expects to find those variables. Uh, <coughs> and yeah, so we have this, this inception problem, right? We, we create this VM with uh, Bosch, UAA, CredUp, and Concourse all running together. Uh, but the variables for those things, the secrets, were generated and are stored in a file, right, on your machine where you initially created uh, um, run backup from. Um, and so what we want is basically we want to have some of those credentials end up in, um, in Concourse, uh, in CredUp, and then later in Concourse, or to be used in Concourse. Um, this is this slide. So that's why we have came up with a solution like CredUp Importer. So it will take everything uh, that we created in our step that we set up Bosch with Buck. You have to stand here. And yeah. okay. <laughs> so when everyone was, when everything was, uh, Bosch was set up with Buck, it has all these, it, it knows all these credentials. But it isn't yet in CredUp, in, in the CredUp part where Concourse can access it. So what we do is with CredUp Importer, it just simply gets all the credentials uh, variables and we'll just put it into, uh, put it into CredUp. And then we have, uh, do we have this? No, this well, is the use cases. We don't have an example problem. Uh, uh, yeah. We have in our next talk. We are having our next talk. In our next talk, we are going to show the demo and how we are going to use it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's also uh, if anyone wants the same, also wants to import their uh, have an have their own uh, Bosch release and they want to import stuff into CredUp, they can use the CredUp importer. Yeah. it's really simple. It's just a Bosch release. With, yeah. with one manifest in which you specify the, uh, the cred up or the credentials that need to be seeded into uh, cred up. But yeah. Um, yeah. No use cases, right? Yeah. For, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I use it myself a lot for development purposes. I don't know, creating Bosch releases. It's stuff I first did with Bosch Lite, but now with all the new Bosch features. Um, Creating concourse pipelines, uh, but also yeah, working on um, dash deployment repos, right? That's and yeah, 
when working on those, it's really nice to have all those things together. Um, and yeah, for production, um, it's also sometimes really useful to, to have like a concourse running alongside your Bosch. Um, so it's not for environments where, so sometimes you have environments where you have like, you have one concourse and you go out to many different environments, but if you're not doing that or you don't have access, network access to all those separate environments, it can be really helpful to just have like uh, one machine uh, with a concourse co-located. Um, because it, like you can scale out your concourse with this approach, right? So it's not for a big build cluster, but it's more for running a deployment job once, uh, or yeah, uh, an, an update stem cell pipeline. Like all those pipelines that are really tied to Bosch, it, it's really useful to have those running on the same machine. It makes it easier to manage. Um, yeah. So uh, yeah, we need to keep Buck up to date because uh, it, it evolves, and we have a lot of uh, because uh, the Bosch deployments uh, will will get new versions uh, every week. Uh, the concourse release will probably be released every two weeks. And the CredUp CLI as well. So what we do is we build a big pipeline where it it gets the resources uh, from uh, from the Bosch deployments, from the concourse releases, and then uh, it will compile all these releases that are not yet compiled yet. Uh, so that's that's the whole thing that you then can use it in a more offline environment. Yeah. yeah. Um, so this is the next step. Yeah. So I want to big, talk a bit about the history of sharing within the Bosch community. So first, yeah, we had Bosch releases and they were on GitHub and we needed I don't know. Uh, at some point, people started publishing uh, tar, uh, tars of final releases, so you wouldn't have to create your Bosch. First, you had to, like, before that, you had to clone the, uh, the repo and then do the Bosch create release, and then it would download everything, create a thing. So that, <laughs> that has evolved, and now we have, like, Bosch IO, which is awesome. So we just, I don't know, Bosch see, like, and even fetch releases, and that's nice. So that's all happened, and after that, we started to work on, I don't know, how do you share deployments, right? Um, how do you make your manifest? How, so we had all patterns, sorts of patterns there. It started with examples that lived in Bosch releases. Then we had some spiff, spruce, face, I don't know, stuff, uh, how to generate and concatenate all those manifests. Um, but yeah, that, that now has evolved to um, Deployment repos being published and uh, the new with a new Bosch CLI that's like all I don't know stabilizing around some common patterns, and I think like the next challenge will be around how are we gonna share concourse pipelines? How are we gonna generate them? How are we gonna um, yeah make them shareable, like useful for others? Um, because I don't know a deployment repo there's a link with a concourse pipeline, probably, right? You also want to have this pipeline to deploy it, which has knowledge about what errands to run and stuff like that. So that's why I wanted to create this base to start developing on, because I think like the core technologies here from like the BUG uh, acronym, those core technologies, I think those are a, like a nice foundation to build up uh, on top of the, the next yeah, way of sharing deployment pipelines. Yeah, to just make it easier for people to just get involved with all the new releases and that kind of stuff. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah. So yes. as we already told. So I, I don't know if we have, we have enough time. If you have enough time, we can show the <laughs> demo here. I think we are, we have enough more than enough time. Uh, this is already 20 minutes, or is that not reset? Do, do we have 20 minutes? I, yeah, I thought we had 20 minutes. How much time do we have left? Does anyone know how much time we have left? I don't know. Um, so our, our, yeah, our next uh, our, our demo of Buck itself will be in the next uh, session. So in question? the next session, and if you have any questions about this and not the demo, <laughs> six, seven, eight, eight questions. Eight okay. minutes. Eight, eight minutes. Okay. Oh, still have eight minutes. Oh, okay. <laughs> Just go for it. Does that work? No. Then you have to exit that one.
and increase the font. Are there questions anywhere? Yeah. I, I already <laughs> asked that one. <laughs> you have a question? Or? It's big enough for you? <laughs> So yeah, for for a CA, that's still an issue. Yeah, that's there. There is n there is nothing at the moment yet that. No, but uh, it has a complete integration with the CA system. I no, but know. I mean, like you, you could do that. I think so. You can use the cred uh, cred up CLI to change those certificates, right? And then you do a push deploy, and it's done. All right. Yeah, but yeah, for yeah, okay. No, it does. Uh, the credup doesn't integrate with custom CH yet, okay. but yeah. I didn't understand how the connection is between Bosch and credup when you create a new Bosch release. How does credup know when this position must be certificated? Uh, that's the variable syntax. So in a Bosch deployment, you just have the uh, double uh, paren. That's like a variable, and that's the name. Yeah, uh, level. I think we had that like a few slides back. Um, how, how do I get that back? Uh, yeah. And then the slides about... Mm, that one, yeah, I think. Okay, full screen that. So... So the question was about how does Bosch know where variables and certificates should go? So, no? Who's creating the certificates? Yeah, so the CREDIP. So, so CREDIP is generating the certificates, and for that, uh, no, that's the other slide. So there, are two, there are two times when... Uh, no, yeah, but that, that, this is... Oh wait, where's the... Oh, there. Yeah, this one. So in, in so here you specify. Um, th this is just a Bosch manifest, right? So in a Bosch manifest, you have now a variables section, and in here you define how to generate the certificate. Yeah. So you have one which is the CA, and that CA will be used by this one. Um, yeah, that's that's how those things are generated. More questions? I can maybe yep. we what what will we show? What do you want to show? So what we have here is if, if we do bug m, we have all the environments variables that will be exposed, so you can invoke bug. You can invoke Bosch immediately. Uh, no, no, not that one. Boy, wait, let me. Um, yeah, so since all those environments are already set, we just can work with Bosch, right, um, in, from within this directory. Um, and we can also do bug, cred hub, uh, which will um, install the CLI if it's not there, and it will set a login to CredUp, so we can do, um, we can find all the credentials that are already in CredUp, uh, get them, generate them, everything you can do with a CredUp CLI. Um, yeah, so what else? Um, we have Maybe it's how to set a bug? Yeah, <laughs> we don't have anything left for the others. Okay, wait, maybe that's good. So this is like, buck up is basically all you do, right? So, and this is, in the end, it's just doing a Bosch create env in the end. Oh, wait, there's another question. Does it run also on Mac OS 6? Hmm? Also, it runs on Mac OS 6 or only Linux? 
No, no, it r runs on Mac OS. So in the end, um, uh, to tell a bit more about Bosch deployment, uh, so the Bosch deployment repo, there's like a lot of CPIs in there that uh, you can use. Uh, we have here a list of the CPIs that we currently support. Um, so as you can see, we, we can use VirtualBox, the VirtualBox CPI for Bosch, uh, and that's what it's using. So on uh, OS X, you will just need to have VirtualBox, and then when you do a backup, it will uh, use the Bosch VirtualBox CPI and the, uh, the stem cell for it to create a virtual machine. And if you do dash dash light, um, this will give you like uh, a warden uh, it will internally use the, the Warden CPI. So instead of creating VMs, it will create uh, Warden containers. So that's what you typically would use for development, right? You would use the VirtualBox CPI to create the VM, like one VM with everything in it, and then uh, when you do a Bosch deploy, that will actually create containers running inside that VM. Um, so yeah, it works on macOS. <laughs> More questions? Um, yeah. Um, yeah, just back up. Um, <laughs> that will create a varsh file. Um, so if you have to configure a CPI uh, to talk to your vSphere or something, uh, yeah, that goes into here. So you have to s specify a network and all those things. Uh, for VirtualBox, we, we can default all those things, but if we can't, uh, for example, for vSphere, because we don't know your password yet, um, yeah, that's why. Uh, so you would put those things into the virus file, and then you do a backup, and you have a... Yeah, so, yeah so, so the basic thing why we build Bug is that we just want to make it simpler for people to get up and running with the latest Bosch and the latest, uh, the latest cred up, latest uh, with all the cloud config integrations and the concourse. Yeah. So did you, I use it a lot to test my, uh, I want a vanilla environment every time when I want to test a, a new Bosch release that I'm creating. Yeah. Because uh, if, you do, if you have a Bosch light and you, every time you need to tear down your Bosch light and it's just a lot of hassle to, to work with. So we hope this uh, will help uh, help some people. Yeah. So there's a bug info, which uh, gives you the fly, the the concourse endpoint uh, with the username and password. So that's what you would use to connect to your concourse in the browser. How do we? Yeah. What do you want to do? Copy paste that into. I can. I think click on the link, but. Any more questions? About anything Bosch? No. <laughs> yeah, sorry, there's not a lot more to it. Uh, we can go over ops files, but there were other talks about that, so I don't know. Yeah. Ah, question. Yeah. Um, what you imported does it, it? It fetches the certificates and passwords from Cretchup and puts it into the manifest before uploading. Or how? Yes. So it? maybe we can show yeah. the whole. Uh, uh, so you, you mean how we seed the credentials to Cretchup? How you uh, take it from there? So what my my question is regarding scalability. So what happens if you want to? Uh, fetch like uh, 1,000 certificates from CredHub. So do you end up with a huge manifest that you have to upload? Or have you, any, have you made any tests regarding scalability if you use so this many? is So in, underneath, it's just using, so the CredHub CLI has an import command, which takes like um, a big YAML file, um, and then will uh, generate those certific uh, uh, credentials. So it's just talking to the API, but it's all going local, right? Mm -hmm. And it's only run, uh, run once on startup. So, yeah, but we don't, so we haven't made any scalability 
uh, or hit any scalability issues because um, we don't have like uh, a thousand certificates because we only have th this is all a really limited scope right we only want to have the uh, credentials and stuff available um, that are generated by bug right so it's only the, the API endpoints of, Bo uh, of Bosch uh, the certificate of Bosch um, username password it's not like there will be more things in the end um, yeah. Okay, thanks. Ah, I can actually keep it. Okay. So maybe we can show it here what, what is exactly going into. Yeah, so you can do Bosch uh, or bug int to actually get the generated manifest um, if you want to look what, what we are using to create the VM. Um, but yeah. Crit Hub. I don't know where exactly it is. I never do it this way. But what are you looking for? For the Crit Hub importer stuff, where you can see that the job that it just. Hmm. Okay, I was shown a trick. Um, I think we have enough. <laughs> okay. So uh, with bug int or bush, which is calling out to bush int, uh, which stands for interpolate, uh, you can do give a path. Um, uh, which is like the ops file style, right? So you can do instance uh, groups slash, and then the name is cred-hub uh, importer. Um, yeah. So this way you will get. Uh, Okay. Uh, we can show it online. <laughs> Probably for the best. Yeah, sorry. I think there's, there's just not more people. Okay, thanks. <laughs> <laughs>